Morning, everyone. We've got some folks trickling in, but we're going to kick things off. Uh, my name is Rainy Tebow. I am a member of New England Dairy. We are a nonprofit funded by dairy farmers that educate the public about dairy farming and dairy nutrition. I'm coming to you today live from my kitchen in northern Vermont, about a couple hundred miles <laughs> north of today's dairy farm. Can't say thank you enough to everyone for joining us for an awesome dairy farm tour in Massachusetts coming up in just a moment. Before we get to the fun stuff, we've got a couple notes to run through. This tour will last 45 minutes with time for questions throughout. Now we do have some folks joining us through Zoom and others through YouTube today. In both cases, you are muted. If you do have questions throughout the webinar, please drop those into the Q&A chat if you are with us on Zoom or drop those in the comment boxes on YouTube. We will work to get all of those answered throughout the tour and we have some Q&A time set aside at the end of our tour as well. Let us know where you're from, what school you're with. We'll make sure we try to give you a shout out throughout the tour. Please know that we have a couple polls during the tour so to check how well everyone is listening and test their dairy knowledge. If you're with us on Zoom, please check those uh, one of your answers on the screen. If you're with us on YouTube, just drop an answer in the comment box again. Now this webinar is being recorded and will be available on New England Dairy's website. Following the webinar, you will receive an email with the recording. We have a poll where we wanna find out how we did. So please take that survey for us. Now make sure you check out our website for lots of great dairy farm and dairy nutrition information. We've got some awesome informational videos, blog posts, recipes, links to meet other New England dairy farmers. And we invite you to stay connected with us and follow us at New England Dairy on all your popular social media channels out there. Now, a quick reminder that this tour is live, being broadcast right on the farm. So you may see a few fluctuations in our video quality, but we'll do everything, everything we can to make this as smooth as possible. So with that, let's get to the farm. Let's meet our host, Peter Melnick of Barway Farm. Peter, how are you this morning? Good raining. Granted, good. Good to uh, good to catch up with you today. Looking forward to the tour. Definitely. So, Peter, first off, give us a little background about your farm, about the family. How long have you been farming in Deerfield, Massachusetts? So, um, yeah, the um, the Melnick family uh, started farming here in Deerfield about a hundred years ago in uh, 1919. My great grandfather came over from Austria and he was a farmer over there and he and his brother settled uh, settled in this valley fortunate for me um, one of the uh, it's we're about 90 miles west of Boston to give everyone a kind of a sense of where Deerfield is we're right on the Connecticut River and the Deerfield River where they merge together in uh, in right in Deerfield so uh, some very fertile farmland. Um, they came here and um, had some relatives here and they started growing um, cucumbers for a local pickle factory. Um, tobacco was a big crop and onions were also big, but they always had um, a small herd of cows, milking cows, probably milked in the beginning even by hand. Um, and then as time went, uh, our dairy herd grew uh, my grandfather took over the farm um, with his nine brothers and sisters, and uh, he really enjoyed the cows. And um, in the middle, uh, in the late 60s, we decided to really focus on dairy. Um, and we went and we built a new cow barn, which was very state of the art. And we were milking almost at one time over 400 animals. Um, today we are more diversified um, and we milk 300 cows. We have 50 dry cows, which are cows that are pregnant and are not being milked. And then we have another 200 to 250 young stock heifers that we are raising to replace the cows, um, starting with the young calves. And uh, the dairy is really a big focus of, of um, of our farm, we are diversified though, but the cows are the backbone. Uh, we started the tour today in our brand new calving barn, which doesn't even have cows in it yet. Um, and we're really excited, thought this would starting. Um, the tour would be a great place to start because this is really where it all starts on the farm. Um, we try to have the cows um, have a baby every year. Um, they're pregnant. Um, for nine months 
and just like a human um, and they have a calf and this is the place it's really important time in their lives uh, to start the calves off well. Uh, this is going to be a really great facility really emphasizing the cow comfort. They'll start down at the other end where we have stalls and then the last 15 days of their pregnancy they'll be in this pen um, which will be bedded with lots of comfortable sawdust and straw and then if as they're having the baby they'll be in this last pen where we can really watch them we'll have cameras set up um, so we can monitor them 24 hours a day and mm -hmm. then they'll have the baby and uh, we will uh, put them into the milking string and they'll start going to work um, making milk was, um, and just really excited to um, have a really, really awesome barn for them to do it in because uh, it's a really important time, like I said, in their life cycle on the dairy. And we just wanted to focus on that. So this thought it would be a neat place to start since it's really the beginning of the cow's life. Um, Definitely. That's so, awesome, Peter. So we've got some excited folks with us here today. We've got some folks from Project Drive in Milford, New Hampshire. We've got a class of nursing assistants from Lewiston, Maine, <laughs> folks from the Learning Clinic in Brookline, Connecticut. So a lot of excited viewers with us today. So Peter, where are we headed? So now we're going to go over to, we're going to kind of do a loop, sort of how the farm uh, makes sense to do the tour. Yeah. Um, we're going to go from the the babe, the calving barn, the maternity barn, as we call it, we're going to head over to the baby barn. So after the cow calf is born, she spends about 24 hours with her mom, um, gets cleaned up. They actually stand up, start, um, you know, st they stand up, start nursing right away, uh, almost mm. within a couple hours. And, um, then um, we bring them over to the baby barn. Um, and this is where they spend the first two to three months of their lives. Um, and this is always one of the most popular places on the tour because uh, let's face it, the calves are kind of cute. <laughs> um, and this is where they, um, like I said, this is where they live. We're full right now. We actually had five calves born yesterday. Wow. Um, Typically we have one a day, um, but yesterday was a busy day. We had five. So uh, the, the, uh, the calf hotel, as we call it, is full, full, full. They, you can see there's uh, three in the pen right here. Um, I think these three were born on Sunday. Um, so when they're born, like I said, they, they're with their moms for a day. They, uh, they get their first drink from their mom and they actually get their mom's milk for a couple days. And then they get, they continue to be on a milk diet for two and a half months. And then we wean them onto just water, um, hay and grain. And uh, they get fed twice a day. Sometimes in the real cold of the winter, we'll feed them three times just to mm -hmm. give them a little bit more energy. Uh, they get name tags, you can see. Um, Pepper there, She's, uh, she has her date of birth, it has her name. A lot of times we will name the daughter the same name as, um, with the first letter name as the mom. So her mom might have been Polly. Um, and uh, we actually have, when people come to the farm, that's one of the things that we let them do is uh, try to help us name the cows because after a while it kind of, finding new names can be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, <laughs> so um, we kind of make, try to get, make their names fun, but it's very personal. I mean, 350 uh, cows and 200 young cows. So we have over five, 600 animals. It sounds like a lot, um, but I kind of equate it to when people have, um, when you have a school with 500 kids in it, um, you don't think you're gonna know everybody, but you eventually know everyone's name and uh, maybe a little bit about them. So the cows are the calves are the same way. Um, we get to know them when they're young and they just kind of, um, you grow up with them mm -hmm. and uh, they're, they're a lot of fun. Peter, we've got a question here from yeah. uh, Karen. She is wondering if there are seasons for calving or are cows having calves every day of the year? So some dairies um, are seasonal. Uh, they will calve a lot of calves in the spring 
because that's when they typically are cow farms that are um, they pasture all their cows. So that's when the grass is the best. So they calve in the late winter, early spring, and then the cow is out on the fresh new grass um, in the springtime. But we are not a seasonal dairy. We are a year round. So we typically try to have um, about 10% of the herd calve each month. Um, it, it equates to about, like I said, at 350 full full grown cows, it's about a cow, a, a newborn calf every day. Um, mm -hmm. Some days there are the five day, five calf days, and you know we might not have a calf the rest of the week. But um, no, we calve year round, and uh, that is just so we kind of keep um, the barn full at all the times, but also just to keep shipping milk um, at the same amount. Mm -hmm. Maybe we calve a little less in the summer. Um, it's hot in the summer. Yeah, <laughs> and cows like cows like this weather. So. Yeah. Peter, you showed us the pen with uh, the cows that were born on Sunday. They were already pretty good size. Give us some interesting facts about calves. I mean, how, how big are they when they're, they're born? Um, you know, what are their personalities like? Yeah, so um, the calf weighs anywhere between, we have Holstein, mostly Holstein, black and white cows, um, which is a one br breed. We do have some jerseys. The jerseys will be in the 50 pound weight. Um, Holsteins will go anywhere from 80 to 100 pounds. Yeah. So uh, you can imagine a 100 pound calf weighs, you know, with a, with a small child, uh, you know, a, a third, fourth grader weighs. So um, they, they're big. Um, they, like I said, they can, they'll get up um, and start trying to nurse on their mom almost within hours. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they, they're like, like people, some of them are really active. Um, and they have their own personality. Some are shy. Um, they have their own, like they have their own personalities. Um, totally creatures of habit, though. They like we, it's very quiet in here right now. A lot of them are just kind of lounging around. Uh, feeding time was about an hour ago, so they're I think they're just digesting after <laughs> after having their morning uh, cereal and uh, milk. So yeah. Um, so Peter, um, I, let's take a moment. Let's, let's um, throw our first poll up for our viewers. So we'll get this on the screen. For those of you again on Zoom, please click your answer and let us know. But the question is, true or false, calves can walk the same day they are born. So we'll give everyone a, a couple seconds, click in your answer there, and then we'll show some results. So Peter, as we transition here, I wanted to ask you, um, as we get those poll results back up on the screen, and if you're watching on YouTube, please drop some comments in the uh, comment box for us with your answer. Awesome, we've got 100%, 100% votes for true. Calves can walk the same day they are born. So good listening skills from our, from our viewers. This <laughs> Peter, as we move though, how important are those calves to the, the future of your farm? You know, what role do they play in, in, in the future? So when my grandfather was um, starting the, and great grandfather was starting the farm, the cows probably gave less than a gallon of milk each. And now our cows are giving, um, they're giving uh, eight to 10 gallons per cow per day. Mm -hmm. And basically a lot of it is, we're feeding them better and housing them better, like in the new cow barn. But really what a lot of it has, comes from is just genetic improvements. We keep, um, you know, we keep breeding the cows so that the next generation has, um, you know, they're structurally more sound, they have better feet and legs, they have, um, they're stronger built, uh, they're able to eat more and in, the net result over time is that they just become more and more productive. So each generation is just keeps building on, you know, having a, a sound genetic base and we keep getting uh, healthier calves that are more resistant to certain things. And um, it's just, uh, you know, it's just like a family. You hope that your kids are, are a little bit smarter than you are and can run a little faster and a little bit healthier. The, the babies are the same way, you know, the calves are the same way. We're hoping that the next generation is just a little bit better. So that's a, that's a really good question. And it's a big focus on, on every dairy farm. 
So, um, so here we are in the dairy center now, um, the milking facility, we call it the milking parlor. And uh, this right here is the bulk tank. And uh, we have a 4,000 gallon bulk tank. We're sh making about 2,500 gallons of milk per day right now. And um, it's, uh, this is refrigerated. So when the milk comes um, from the cow, uh, the milking machine takes it, the, the milk from the animal and puts it in a pipeline and then pumps it into the tank. And then we are storing it at about 34 degrees to keep it really fresh. The milk truck comes every day, picks up the milk and delivers it to the processing plant. And that, and we're right sort of in a central hub. So our milk oftentimes can go to a powder and butter plant. It can go to a, um, it can go to uh, a fluid processing plant um, ice cream plant. There's a lots of different places. Um, an interesting question um, I always ask people is what do you think the temperature of the cow's milk is when it actually comes out of the cow? Um, so I wonder if we can get some, uh, get some things online if people uh, have any idea what that, what that temperature might be. It's about 34 when, it's, when we have it chilled and we're storing it. So now we're in yep. the milking parlor. This is where we actually harvest the milk. Awesome. Yeah, let's see if we can get some viewers, um, Peter, to uh, write in their guesses. So we know that it, the milk is stored at a safe 34 degrees. How hot is it, though, coming out of the cow? That's the question. So viewers, please take a... If you get a second here, let, let us uh, drop in your answers for us. We'll see if they're right. <laughs> so where are we at, Peter? Uh, okay, so now we're in the milking parlor. And I was wondering if you could queue up the, uh, the, the filming of the actual cows because we're, we're not milking right now. So Definitely. yeah, so now everybody can see the picture of the cows um, actually in the parlor um, earlier on today. And uh, so that all the cows come in. They, uh, they actually, they get milk twice a day at, we do it ours at four in the morning at four at night. And um, they really enjoy coming. You can see that cow, she's chewing her cud and staying there comfortably. We attach the milkers to their udders and it takes about five minutes for her to, to give about um, four to five gallons of milk in the morning and four to five gallons again at night. And, uh, when they first have their baby, <clears throat> there's a picture of the, the machine on the cow. Um, very comfortable. It's just, um, it's just pulsating and extracting the milk from the, from the animal. And uh, they really enjoy it. Uh, there's some mothers out there. They might know what that feeling is. If you have a lot of milk uh, in you and it's not uh, getting extracted, it's very uncomfortable. So they're really happy when they come in. Um, and, uh, and go to the milking parlor. It's probably one of their favorite times of the day. And uh, we do it 365 days a year, um, twice a day. We have a backup generator. If we have snowstorm, we lose power. There are no snow days here on the farm. <laughs> um, and uh, hurricanes, whatever, the cows have been milked on this farm for 365 days a year for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it is a lot of work. Um, <clears throat> it takes a lot of uh, patience to work with the animals all the time, um, but we really enjoy it. And it's, um, we don't visually always see the milk in our system, um, but sometimes I peek my head in the bulk tank just to actually get a visual of like what we're producing. Yep. And it is pretty awesome. Um, to see all that milk in there and to realize how many families we're going to feed every day um, with, with the milk and the different milk products that uh, yes. it's going to go into. Peter, we've got some, we've got a, a good range, I think, on the temperature of the milk coming out of the cow. We're about 86 to 101 degrees on a lot of our guesses here. Are, are folks in the right ballpark? Yeah, so um, cow's temperature is about, uh, it varies between 100 and 102. So uh, all of you viewers who went with the 101, we'll, uh, we'll, give, you the, we'll give you the gold star credit for, for answering that one. So, awesome. next, so as we transition next, here, I think we have a video, another video we want to uh, share for folks. 
as we head to the barn here. Sure. So um, yeah, these are the cows uh, that are out on pasture. We keep our cows um, while they're milking, they're in the barn, but um, young stock, they are able to go out in the pasture and um, when they're young and they just roam around out there, eat grass, we bring them some feed. They all have water um, and they hang outside. Um, they actually don't like the hot weather. They love they love the cold as long as they're out of the wind um, and can stay somewhat dry on a snowy day. Um, cows are they 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 have uh, they weigh 1,500 pounds a full grown cow, and they wear leather coats. So um, when it's 90 degrees and humid, the cows are not happy. Um, they they prefer a day like today when it's uh, 45 and a little breezy. And uh, even the cold winter days, um, they. Uh, they are happier. So now we're headed to uh, the main milking barn, which is attached to the milking center. Um, and this is, uh, <clears throat> this is where the dairy cows are housed. We have what's called a freestall barn. And basically um, they are grouped in different um, stages of their lactation and um, they're fed differently, but they have stalls that they can choose to go to. Um, we bed these every day with fresh bedding. Um, we scrape the alleyways every day to keep it clean and we bring them fresh feed and uh, they have water troughs that um, they have fresh water. So we have ventilation for them as well. The fans are on today, moving the air a little bit. And um, they, uh, this is their home. Um, while they're working, while they're milking, and uh, they, they're they really happy here. The happier they are, the more milk they make. So it behooves us to really make them as comfortable and happy as possible. Uh, on one side, we have the milking cows. On the side right now that we're filming, that these are actually the heifers. These animals are a um, year and a half, almost two years old, and they're about to have their first babies. And uh, we have them over in this section of the barn and uh, they are gonna be entering the milking string soon. So this is the, as you can imagine, the little calves, this is what they look like a year and a half later. Um, and then over here, we have the big milk cows. Um, these girls are actually, um, you know, are actually producing the milk and this is the, the full grown cows and they have still the same tags. They actually get different tags when they go in the milking string. Um, with just numbers, uh, but we do still know their names as well, but it gets really mm -hmm. complicated. So we go with, with the numbers. A uh, little bit about their feed. Um, we have over 600 acres that we crop. And um, by cropping, I mean, we grow uh, corn and we grow hay and we chop it into small pieces and um, we ferment it in a pile so we can it preserves it through the winter and the cows love the corn and the hay you can see some pieces of corn here um and then we also feed them grain um that we get from a grain company and they source it basically it's soybean uh some distiller's grain we actually get some waste brewer's grain from a local brewery and the cows love the brewer's grain it's kind of a little bit sweet a little fermented um Maybe they like the taste of the beer, I'm not sure, but uh, they, we do add that to their feed. Um, they love consistency, unlike us, where we get a little bit fussy if we eat the, if your parents give you the same thing all the time. If you just ate the same meal, you might get a little bored. They really enjoy to have the same thing. When they, they get upset stomachs when we start changing their diets all the time. So um, they, like, they like their corn and their hay. It seems to make them happy. We feed them a special diet that we have a nutritionist um, that works with us to make sure that the cows are getting exactly the vitamins, minerals, protein, energy they need to, uh, to make, uh, you know, 10 gallons of milk. Uh, yes. just, so you, just so you guys can visualize, they'll drink in the summer 30 to 50 gallons of water in one, one day. So uh, they're big animals and they're, uh, they're eating a lot. And but it is an important thing that the better the feed that we give them, the better the quality of the milk. So we really mm -hmm. take a lot of uh, takes a lot of work. A lot of our focus is on what goes into the cow. So we get a really good nutritious product coming out. 
Did we get any, any questions uh, from the from the uh, from the viewers about uh, the freestyle barn, Rainy? Peter, I think it's um, yeah, yeah. Um, Peter, talk a bit more about their feed. That we've got a a couple of questions about the the TMR, the feed. There, cows seem to be great recyclers. Having you name some of these different ingredients that they can eat. Yeah, so um, like I said, the brewer's grain is a perfect example. So we have a local brewery um, and they have what's called spent grains. They drain the beer off and they have um, what's left is like a mash of wet um, oatmeal-y type um, barley and hops and whatnot. And really the only thing they could do is get is to throw it away because they it's not they you can't drink it, but it makes perfect cow feed. Um, Soybean meal, which we use, people use uh, soy products all for a myriad of things. And after the beans have been used to, they've been expelled or whatever, the cows eat the byproducts. Distiller's grain, same thing. They're all byproducts and the cows, um, wonderful. They eat, uh, we have um, a bread, local um, bread, uh, bread making facilities, they have uh, uh, the wheat mids that they use. Um, the cows will eat them. They are just wonderful recyclers um, and a big part of the local ecology. And we're gonna go over to the digester a little bit later in, uh, in a minute. And we're gonna talk about um, that part of the recycling. But really the cows, um, it is a big cycle um, that they're going through. It's the cycle of life. I showed you the, the babies and then the, the heifers and then the cows being milked. And they have another baby and it just keeps going around. Well, the um, cows are doing the same thing. They're recycling the, the byproduct, people's byproducts of food. They turn that into nutritious milk, but there's also the byproduct there, cow manure. Um, and we're gonna talk, go over and, and tell you about what we do with that part um, mm -hmm. to, to go and raise the crops and uh, have that whole bio cycle going on. So awesome. yeah, they are great recyclers, no doubt. Even there, they lie on, um, on sawdust on their bedding and that comes from local uh, sawmills uh, another byproduct of the lumber lumber industry. We take the sawdust from the saws and put it under the cows and the calves. Um, just another way that the cows pitch in instead of wasting that product. The cows are happy to happy to use it. Mm -hmm. Peter, as we move, one more question about uh, related to food and in cows eating. Linda is wondering what it means to be to see the cows chewing their cud. What's that all about? Yeah, I mentioned that before the cow, the cow in the milking parlor was chewing her cud. And basically, um, the cows are pretty amazing. Um, you think about it, the hay is basically like your lawn, and they have the ability to turn your lawn <laughs> into, um, you know, into milk. Mm -hmm. And they can do that because they have four stomachs. But we can't, you know, if we tried to eat our lawn, um, even you, your dog tries to eat your lawn and doesn't always, isn't always so successful because our s digestive systems can't handle that green product. But mm -hmm. the cows with their four stomachs, they actually chew the material, they swallow it, and then they try breaking it down and then they actually regurgitate the material and chew it again and keep going. So a cow that is chewing her cud is a, usually is a sign of a happy cow um, she's making milk, she's content, and she's working hard. You can see a couple of them are chewing their cud right now as we walk by. And yeah. uh, that's, uh, that's what they do. And it's, a pretty, it's pretty marvelous that they can, like I said, turn that corn and hay into milk. And uh, you know, luckily with those four stomachs, they're able to, to break it down. So, so Peter, now I'm we're, excited for the next section. Where are we going? So yeah, so um, we are actually over at um, the, di the methane digester. And basically what we do is we scrape the cow manure every day. And to give you an idea, each cow makes about 100 pounds of waste every day. And that waste goes into a pit. And then normally what we would do, most farmers do is they either spread it every day 
or they store it in a tank like this blue tank right next to us and spread it on their fields in the spring and the fall when the, um, when the fields are empty from the crops and uh, use it as fertilizer. But we've actually taken it one step further here and we installed about five years ago, a methane digester. And basically what the methane digester is, is a vessel um, that caps, that is much like a cow's stomach. It is 102 degrees and we heat it up. We pump the cow manure in it and we pump food waste from local food manufacturers all over actually Massachusetts. And we mix the two together in an anaerobic process, which means no oxygen. And the bugs in a simple form, the bugs uh, within the digester actually process the waste products, the cow manure and the food waste. Um, and they look at, they most active at that 102 degrees, the anaerobic um, state. They, in a simple term, the bugs process the material and they fart. And they fart actually methane and sulfur and it goes up into the air. And instead of many of you know, methane is things that is a something that is not very good for the uh, our greenhouse gas emission. So we are actually capturing that instead of letting it go into the atmosphere. And then we are running, um, taking that methane and running it into an engine, uh, a big which turns in turns runs a generator and we're making one megawatt of electricity every hour or a thousand kilowatts. And to give you some idea, that's about enough to power 800 homes, which interestingly enough is about the, about the number of homes in Deerfield. So we, the cows on our farm actually are powering all the homes in our community. And uh, it's one of the great things that we think that the cows have evolved into some of the most important citizens in the town. And mm -hmm. uh, um, it's really been uh, uh, a really great project. Um, we work with a company called Vanguard Renewables. They uh, actually helped me manage this part of the, the farm. And uh, some of you should check them out on the internet. They, uh, they have a great, some great website and uh, explains really what their company does and how they're helping lots of farmers in New England um, really utilize our cow manure and also utilize um, food waste, which has been a, uh, you know, instead of going to the landfill, we're turning it into um, lots of products. We're turning it into electricity. We're turning it into fertilizer for the farm fields. We're making um, heat. The digester also makes heat that we use to, um, heat our farm buildings and someday we hope to even build a greenhouse and maybe grow some crops there so as you can tell the dairy farm is uh, thanks to the cows which really is the focus we really have lots of um, lots of neat things going on here and uh, like I said the cows Rainy you and I have talked about it uh, the cows are the ultimate recyclers um, and uh, they really um, are pretty amazing uh, animals. So Peter, you guys recently turned a hundred years uh, on your farm. What would your previous generations think about this digester technology? Uh, I have to imagine they'd be pretty blown away that your cows are now producing electricity for your community. Yeah, that um, that's a great question, Rainey. Uh, I often think about, I mean, it, it blows me away that um, you know, we can actually run our digester with an iPhone anywhere that you have Wi-Fi in the world. So I could be, I could be, you know, in Colorado skiing and I can turn the digester on and off from my iPhone. And I don't think that um, my grandfather or great grandfather can actually, could actually wrap their heads around how that works. But it just shows you in a hundred years, um, you know, how far we've come because my, you know, the original farm was probably just about everything was done with horses and uh, we didn't even have any tractors at the time. So now we're getting to the point where we're talking about buying um, an elector gonna eventually come out soon with electric tractors. So we will actually be able to take our tractor 
and plug it into the digester and then do our own field work. So we won't be importing really any energy from anywhere else. Um, we'll be making our own energy to do our own crop work. And uh, to me, that is like, I don't think that, I mean, I have a hard time realizing that we're gonna do it. I can't imagine what they would think. That's pretty amazing. Peter, what does it mean to you as a, as a farmer, as a member of the agricultural community here in New England? You know, we saw the cows, we've seen the digester. Talk about the field work. I mean, how important is everything you do or how is everything you do tied to protecting the environment? So, yeah, so that's really um, sustainability um, has been a big focus on our farm. Um, we often say that, um, I like to say that every generation leaves their mark. Um, my great grandfather started the farm. My grandfather really grew the farm. My father preserved all our land um, so it couldn't be developed. That was really mm -hmm. his, his big focus. Um, so it would always be an agricultural production. And uh, I think my focus has been on sustainability and really making the farm environmentally and economically sustainable. And really what that means is just being um, good stewards of the land, take care of the soil, um, using as few pesticides and herbicides as we can, uh, using organic fertilizer, trying different cropping methods, um, do, applying all nutrients responsibly so nothing ends up in, in the rivers or the streams. Um, and tr also even it's also is one of the side effects of the methane digester is that it takes the bad smell of what some of you may, when you drive by a farm that just spread their cow manure, it sort of has a pungent smell and it's not always favorable to all our neighbors. But one of the neat things about the methane digester is the methane is in the sulfur, it's the part that really smells. We take that away, it reduces the odor by 90%. So our neighbors love the methane digester. Not only are we powering their are we powering their house, but we're also um, reducing the odor. So when they're out in their backyard and it's right next to one of our fields, it doesn't smell um, yeah. as pungent as it used to. So that's really what um, sustainability means to me. It's a big word that has lots of different meanings, but um, it's really about being, um, you know, a part of the community, being, um, you know, responsible for what we're doing. Uh, trying to be cognizant of, of uh, you know, other people and the environment and just really being, uh, you know, just being part of, of our surrounding world and making sure that we fit in a really responsible way. And uh, the other thing too that we always have to keep in mind is that we're feeding everybody and that is really important. And uh, it's one of the things that we take a lot of pride in here is that we've been putting fresh milk on people's tables for over a hundred years. And uh, sometimes it's a challenge. The other night a cow had a baby um, and my mom and dad uh, were out pulling the calf out at eight o'clock at night. They had the lights on and on in the truck and our birthing barn isn't ready yet. So they were out in the field with the, with the mom um, and helped her have a baby. And, uh, you know, that was after already work, my dad, uh, after already working a 12, 14 hour day. So mm -hmm. it takes a lot of work, um, um, but we take a lot of pride in being good stewards of the land, uh, good stewards of the cow and uh, good, good community members. Yeah. So Peter, we're back in the barn, which is a good thing. We've got a, a handful of cow specific questions for you. Um, sure. I think this is a fun one from Dawn. She is wondering, when do cows moo the most? Are they loud and excited when it's food time in the morning or at night? Uh, when do you hear the barn uh, most active? So the, I would say that um, they don't moo when they're very content, um, when something is off a little kilter. So um, 
if we're late with our milking schedule for some reason, because um, the milking machines broke and they're spend like three hours behind milking and they're like wondering what's going on and they really let you know, or if uh, the, for some reason we're a little bit late feeding, feeding the cows and they're like, what's the deal? You guys are usually, you know, feeding times is 8 a.m. and you're not here yet and it's 10 o'clock. So, uh, they really will let you know if something is not in in the norm because they really are creatures of habit. You get out of that habit and uh, that's when the mooing starts. So yeah, that is a good question. <laughs> so uh, an interesting one here from Rebecca, she is wondering how long is a cow productive for? What's their milking timeline like and what happens to them You know, when their time is up at the farm? Do they go on to, to continue to be a part of our food system in one way or another? Yeah, so um, we tend to turn um, our cows, we tend to cull for one reason or another about 20 to 30% of our um, herd every year. So um, it's sort of, some cows can milk, um, you know, ten, they, it takes two years before they get into the milking string. And then, um, each milking cycle is about a year to 15 months. So some cows can be here for up to 10 years, have uh, multiple calves. Some for some reason or another, um, mainly they may not be able to get pregnant again. Um, We'll have to leave the the milking string. From there, they usually enter into our um, nation's beef supply. And uh, most of it will, their cows will be used for hamburger. Um, in our food system. So that's really what happens to them. Um, Like I said, some cows will be here for a long time. Others have a shorter stay. All sort of depends on, um, you know, their, their, what happens to them for health reasons and uh, how many cows we, uh, how many new cows we have coming to take their place. So a bunch of factors, but that's sort of, I would say the simplest answer to that question. Mm -hmm. Um, Peter, I want to backtrack, backtrack just a bit, thinking back to the bulk tank. Um, can you talk about how often milk is tested for, for safety um, for a host of different categories? Yeah, I skipped over that one. That's usually a big one because um, when I give tours of the farm, because it always, um, it always amazes me. I, we grow vegetables. Um, we sell meat. Um, a small amount of meat as well, but really dairy is our main focus. And it always amazes me how much more stringent that the milk and milk testing is compared to other foods that we see that you can buy in a grocery store Mm -hmm. or get at a restaurant. Um, So the milk is tested every day. The milk truck driver comes and he takes, they take a sample. And before that milk is blended with other farmers milk at the processing plant, they test the milk for antibiotics for parts per trillion, if you can imagine that. And then they also test it for the level of bacteria to make sure that the bacteria levels are safe. So most meat at a meat packing plant is randomly sampled. Vegetables very, very, very randomly sam- sampled, if any, um, for anything, unless there's an outbreak. Um, so um, in processed foods, even the same thing, very less, but milk, every load, every day tested parts per trillion. So I like to tell people when they come here that cha- I challenge them to find another food product that is as safe and is tested to the level that your milk is um, at, at the, uh, the dairy case. And uh, nobody's come up with a good, good reply for me yet. So if someone can come up with something that's tested to that level. Um, and it just makes it, uh, makes it show that's how um, stringent our industry is. We take safety very um, seriously. Um, and we as dairy farmers take a lot of pride in putting a really safe product on the table. Mm-hmm. Um, And it doesn't matter if it's conventionally or organically raised or whatever. Um, All milk is really safe when it's on the grocery table. And uh, we all, all dairy farmers take a lot of pride, whether it's in a cows are in freestall barns in tie stall barns and out in the pasture, really, we all, all, uh, all of us have the same goal and that's to put a great product on the table. Yeah. Peter, as we come to a close, you're talking about pride. What kind of pride do you take on, 
having this hundred year history and tradition in, in Deerfield, Massachusetts and getting to create really nutritious and safe products for your community, our region, na- the nation as a whole. What does that mean to you? Um, so I think the best way to answer that question is um, dairy farming is um, economically probably not the greatest way to get rich. <laughs> Um, we eke out a living. It's challenging with the weather and, and the markets and all the money that we have to invest in the infrastructure to um, take care of these animals. But I think that most dairy farmers do it because they take a lot of pride in what they do. Um, they love, we love our cows. Um, we love walking out in the fields and seeing um, the crops grow and harvesting them and uh, seeing the seasons change and, uh, you know, and seeing the farm change, you know, with that new cow barn, that's exciting to me. I take a lot of pride in the fact that I'm gonna be able to really house the cows in a state-of-the-art facility where they're cl- clean and comfortable. But uh, it's just the, pro- you know, we do it because we take a lot of pride in what we do. We don't do it to make a ton of money. Um, I think it's, um, and it's also to do the same thing that, you know, that my grandfather, great grandfather did, my father did every day, 365 days a year. And uh, I think that that really motivates us to, uh, to do what we do. Yeah. Well, Peter, thank you so much. We've officially surpassed our 45 minute mark. Want to say thank you so, so much to you and your family for hosting us for our final virtual farm tour of 2020. We, we couldn't have asked for a better time with you. So thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who's tuned in over Zoom and through YouTube today. We really appreciate everyone taking the time to be with us. So stay tuned for an email from us with a recording of the tour as well as the survey. Please fill that out. Let us know how we did. Make sure you visit newenglanddairy.com to learn more about New England dairy farming and dairy nutrition. Again, we have lots of fun activities, recipes, and so much more you can try over there. Peter, viewers, thank you all so, so much. We really appreciate it. Have a fantastic week. Thank you, Rainey.